Hello! Welcome to our channel. Liz here, her comfort and grace home. Um, today, I'm going to get a little personal. I'm a little nervous here. Um, but when Jen and I started this channel, um, we really, really wanted just to create this space where we could be a blessing onto others, whether it is a DIY project to help build confidence, um, to create a space you love, whether it's any kind of helpful tips or recipe or anything. Um, not that we're experts at any of that, but you know, just sharing things that have worked for us that we thought might work for you or work for others. Um, and then another thing we really wanted to do with this little space of ours on the interwebs <laughs> is um, share some of the stories, some of our experiences, um, because unfortunately Jen and I have some laundry list of weird health stuff that um, we have just vaguely talked about on social media. Um, it's like, oh, and Liz has her health stuff or Jen's health stuff or, you know, things like that. So I figured today I would take this opportunity to explain what Liz's weird health stuff is um, in hopes that someone out there finds it encouraging um, or hopeful um, because I have come a very long way in almost 10 years of my diagnosis and um, and I feel like I had had somebody that was sharing that they had had this particular thing happen to them and that they were living life and they were okay and um, and not only that but like really thankful for a lot of the lessons that they have learned along the way too. I think that would have been really, really awesome to have. So I hope I can be that person for somebody out there. And whether or not this is what you're going through, I hope that you can take something from my experiences because sharing is what connects us. And so anyway, without further ado, here is what happened to me. I have an immune disease called common variable immunodeficiency. CVID. Um, I think it's one in 25,000. Um, and it started back in 2011. Um, I was constantly getting sick, just congestion, and sinus, and cough, and ear, and eye. It was just stuff going on. Um, and it was just a constant antibiotic. It was like as soon as I got off the antibiotic. It was like a few days later, I'm like calling my doctor again. I'm like, I am sick again and I feel awful. And meanwhile, I had three little ones at that time. Um, they were two, three, and four. And, um, you know, so I, I had to keep on going and I just kind of felt like, you know, you have an, a miserable head cold. Like that was like a year and a half. Um, of that before um, I was finally diagnosed. So I went through doctor after doctor trying to figure out what was wrong. Why can't I get better? Um, and uh, you know, my primary care doctor who is no longer my primary care doctor just kept telling me I had allergies. And I was like, look, I know this is not allergies. Um, I went to an ENT and I had chronic sinusitis um, diagnosis and had sinus surgery because they thought that was it. Um, and um, then I finally went to an allergist um, because I have um, several medications that my body re reacts strangely to um, and penicillin being one of them and they thought let's test you for penicillin now since it's been a while and maybe it's not that bad and that's the magic potion that can kill this bacteria that's been in you forever so we were just grasping at straws um, and ironically it was the allergist who figured this out he said you know what I want to run some blood work because that should be number one why this wasn't, you know, from the get-go, I don't know. But um, so we had blood work drawn, and I'll never forget, it was like a Saturday morning, and my phone rang, and it was him. And I was like, why is an allergist calling me on a Saturday? And he was like, I just happened to be in the office, and um, your blood work came in, the, the fax machine, and um, yeah, looks like you have common variable immunodeficiency. Um, and like my mind, I was like, what? And um, he's like, your IgGs, your gamma globulins, which is a part of your immune system, is like extremely low, extremely low. Um, and like remarkably low, I think was the, was the term. So um, he was like, 
Monday morning, you're going to call Johns Hopkins. You're going to see an immunologist there. You know, this is his name and blah, blah, blah. And you're probably going to be having lifelong tr infusions. And, um, it was just like, my mind was just like, oh, like my world just changed. It's like all of a sudden I have an immune disease. Like what in the world? And like, I'm hearing words like no cure and like lifelong. And, you know, it was just a lot. <laughs> um, and I was really scared. Um, so scared. In fact, <laughs> my first infusion at Hopkins, I passed out, which I've never done in my life. It was scary. And I threw up. Like that's how much like anxiety was going on. I'm scared. <laughs> um, but, um, and for years I was scared. You know, I would read and um, learn more about my disease and the cancers and the things that we are more likely to get. Um, it was, I just kept having this fear of the future. Like I, ref I wouldn't let myself like think too far down because I was scared of what my future would look like, you know? Um, and there's just so much out of my control and I could go on and live a healthy life or I could get a million things. Um, in fact, the <laughs> people with CBID are called zebras. That's like our title. Um, because zebra, no two are alike. So my CVID experience could be completely different than another person's CVID experience. Um, so some do really well, some don't do so well. Um, so it's all so much unknown. And it, as soon as I was diagnosed and confirmed that yes, it looks like you do have CVID, um, I was starting weekly treatments. Um, basically, um, this process of loading this oh i should have had it I should go get it from my closet um it's just like this i'm gonna go get it Hold on. um so basically i get out all of my fun stuff and i put the medicine in a big syringe there's a big giant syringe in here and this kind of just slowly pumps the healthy gamma globulins basically it's like replacement therapy i'm, I'm looking at the wrong camera again <laughs> I get very distracted. <laughs> so anyway, it takes about 40 minutes and it is the plasma of healthy people's blood who have healthy gamma globulins, which I cannot make on my own. So basically, it's all because of other people who donate that I am here and that I am well um, and I am healthy. So I am grateful. <laughs> um, I do so now we have bumped up from every week to every other week so i have we started off with a smaller dose more frequently and now we're going less frequent this is the least frequent i can go um and uh otherwise i'd have to do it monthly at hopkins um with the iv and all that kind of stuff so i'd rather do it at home my husband does it for me every other week god bless him um i joked i was like we really are taking this whole in sickness and in health thing Quite literally um so because i am just i hate needles i hate them um and i what i do is i prep it all ready get it all set and then he comes in and does the one on each side um and then yeah it takes about 40 minutes of sitting there while that syringe just that pump slowly goes into my system and um and it took about 15 months um from when i was diagnosed to when i started feeling the effects, um, which is what they told me. They said it was not going to be just like that overnight. I wasn't going to be well. Um, so again, like during those months, you can't help it that that negative thought just gets in there. Like, what if this doesn't work? And what if you are sick forever? And what if this happens and that happens? And oh my gosh, what a lesson over these years it has been in trusting God with everything. Okay. Like, I am such a control freak and this has been like such a, <laughs> I mean, it's funny what a control freak I am and yet I'm given a disease that I have zero control over. And um, I'm just like, I think God is trying to, to teach me something here. And it really has been. I mean, I have had times on my knees just crying and I have had like a few years after my diagnosis, I had this um, enlarged lymph node and lymphoma is one of the cancers that 
people with CVIG have a higher risk of getting. And so my doctor didn't like it at all and I had to do biopsies. And, um, and then finally they wanted to just do a lumpectomy and take it out and then they couldn't because of where it was located. So it was a whole bunch more of unknowns. I never like did get a final answer. And um, they, because they, then they took out the wrong tissue. They thought it was lymph node tissue and it was, it was a whole thing. So, um, but I, in those moments is when I truly felt, I knew I was being taken care of and I couldn't explain it. And I know it was the Lord. And um, it makes me teary eyed thinking about it. I can remember sitting in church and, um, and it was the week of my surgery and just being terrified and then being so overcome with peace that I was just like, I, it was, it was crazy. I can't even explain it. And just so many of those moments throughout the, this decade of having CVID, um, and I mean, look at me now, almost 10 years later. And I was terrified to think of what I would be 10 years from my diagnosis. Um, but I am good and my levels are good. And um, I haven't gotten, knock on wood, too many crazy other things, you know. Um, I always, like for so long there, any ache or pain or bump or bruise, I would go immediately go to something like, this is something happening now. Okay, what's this gonna be? Okay, um, this is gonna be the start of the next thing. Um, but so far, other than, you know, going to get blood work done a couple times a year, going to Hopkins once a year now, um, that, and my every other week of my treatment, I don't even think about it. Um, and so I just feel like, I just wish I'd have seen someone that was living with CVID when I was diagnosed. It was like me that was like, this isn't a death sentence, okay? Like, I mean, now granted, I was extremely lucky with an early diagnosis. Believe it or not, a year and a half is not long um, to be diagnosed because it is such a rare thing. Like I've had to teach doctors about this. Um, they're like, what is this? And I explain this to them. So that's another reason why I read that we're called zebras. It's because apparently there was some saying in the medical profession years ago or something like if it walks like a horse and sounds like a horse or something like that, then it's most likely a horse. Um, I think I have that right. I don't know. But it's not a zebra. So basically, you know, like this is a very rare thing for someone with all those symptoms to have. So, you know, it wasn't all the doctor's faults. I mean, this is kind of a rare thing, but, um, but a lesson in always start with blood work. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I guess what I just basically wanted to say here today is, um, share my story with you that, you know, we all have stuff, we all have something. Um, and you know, I think so often, especially with social media and stuff, you see all these good parts and, but everybody's dealing with something, you know? Um, and this is what I'm dealing with. And yes, it's an immune disease, but I'm okay. And I am so thankful. And just, I mean, again, here come the tears. Like God has been so good to me. And listen to this, like this like blows my mind when I start thinking of all the ways that he has been so present throughout all of this like the details that he like before you're even born like i mean my reaction to penicillin had it not been a weird reaction when i was a kid to penicillin i wouldn't have seen that allergist you know like it's he's in every detail like i think about that like i would have just kept going to doctors and going to doctors and not getting any answers and let you know just being like dubbed one of those people that sinus surgery wasn't going to work and you're just going to have chronic sinusitis forever and and but it was like since i had a penicillin allergy they were like go see the allergist and that allergist is the one who discovered this so it's like he's in every detail guys um and it's just it's brought me so much joy getting to know him even better because of this disease. Um, so I am, oh, I am beyond grateful. Um, so anyway, 
I guess that's all I wanted to say for today. And um, so when you hear Liz's health stuff, <laughs> that's what it is, a common variable immunodeficiency. And if you happen to be one of the 25,000 out there um, and you wanna contact me, ask me some questions, I'd be happy to answer them if I can. Keep advocating for yourself and keep on praying and the good Lord's gonna answer um, one way or another. And I didn't think it would be the answer of an immune disease, but look, here I am. Um, and it's not the diagnosis I wanted at the time, but I will take it because of all the things that I have learned um, about life, about myself, about God. Um, it's been overall a blessing. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time. Bye.